So the Gillette principle is as follows. I'm going to give you the razor. I'm going to give it you. Free. What do you have to buy? The stick. No, I'm giving you the stick. Okay. I'm giving you the stick. Okay. What do you have to buy? Do I have to buy the blades, the razor? Shaving cream. The no, you have to buy the blades. But I've given you the stick. <laughs> and how long will the stick last? Hmm? But I'll be blade. Well, no, I'll give you one blade to start with. Mm -hmm. I'll give you three blades to start with. Mm -hmm. But what's going to happen over the next ten years? You need to keep that if you have five more. It's known as the Gillette Principle. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant. It's genius. Mm -hmm. It's the fundamental way in which many people, many companies do business. We'll give you what you think is the expensive bit. Rolls-Royce does it with engines on planes. They sell the engines cheaply, or relatively cheaply, but they have a maintenance contract to look after them. It's clever. Anyway, but what I'm saying is, so those companies that are working to a certain extent, spotting the masses, getting phones into their hands, ensuring that they use app, their apps, getting them to use the fintech solutions that they're putting in there, getting them to use the social media options that they're in there, and making one, not even a narrow, whatever, the, what's the subdivision of an area? It's called the... Um, Come on. Getting just a few comments from everybody, regularly, that's how you build a business. Right, next. So, the answer to your question, I'm going to be brutal. Is, it going to, is Nigeria going to be in the top league in the near future? No. It'll overtake out. It'll overtake South Africa. Yeah, but that's just the product of size and oil price. Yeah. So what's the timeline that you see? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it depends on a thousand and one things. It depends on the oil price, it depends on the Niger Delta, um, peace, uh, security. Sorry? The, security. the security issue, it depends on the ability of the government to continue with its anti-corruption measures, it, continue, it depends on all those sort of issues. I th look, <coughs> the one thing I've been most encouraged by while I've been here <coughs> happened yesterday when I was at the radio station, the 98, Smooth 98, and when I was at Nigeria Info. I was meeting people of your age, okay? I'm assuming that everybody around this table, with the exception of me, is under 40. <laughs> I'm assuming that everybody around this table, with the exception of me, is under 30. You are all energetic, intelligent, educated, aggressive, lively, debatable, you know, you will debate hard. Mm -hmm. And this was like the same people I met at these radio stations. They were all amazing. I mean, these kids were just, I say kids, poor, pardon my, you know, I'm 55. <laughs> <coughs> <Very sad. coughs> Most people are kids compared to me. <coughs> um, but I was energized by listening to the, you know, and I was fascinated. And all the radio stations I went to, all the presenters were women. Asking hard, penetrating questions. That's the future of this country. The future of this country is not miserable old farts like me or people in their 50s. The future of the country is you. And that is, I firmly believe, Nigeria's secret weapon. A well-educated, intelligent, lively, aggressive youth that will eventually turn around and say, I'm going to put up with this crap. You know, run your business honestly. Government, we expect you to do it properly. We want decent roads. It's going to take time. Okay, so we've had a rise in startups coming up from the tech sector in Nigeria currently. And we feel in the next couple of years they have what it takes to actually put Nigeria up there in the global context. So do you think that is actually possible? No. Why? Same reason. You're going to be, look, you're going to be a player. Okay. You're going to be a player when you get your act together. You see the difference here? If you, I could sit here now and I could tell you what you want to hear. Right? I could sit here now and I could tell you Nigeria is going to be number one in this. 
and Nigeria is going to be a world leader in that. And Nigeria will do this and do that. And you'd all like go and you all go, hey, yeah, 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 go Nigeria. Do you believe it? You will have a financial, you will have a tech sector in the same way that Afriwan is building a phone here. In the same way that uh, there is a thriving and growing fintech financial app sector that will appeal, but it's not going to be appealing to the middle classes, it's going to be appealing to the masses. Are you going to be the next Israel startup nation? No. You could be. You could be. But you can't be while well, you can't get a road that's going to get the product out of the country. You can't be while well, you can't get, you know, you go, to, you go to Israel or go to Tel Aviv, you can get Wi-Fi on a teaspoon. So the temptation is to tell you what you want to hear. The reality is that it will take a lot longer and it's going to have to take leadership from the top. You will have these beacons of brilliance and everybody will cluster around them. And you will have these, you know, you've got this computer, where, where, where am I going next? Computer, oh, computer village? Right, computer village. You've, you've got computer village. But how big is computer village? It's really big. It's quite big. But what does it do? It's a hub for, you know, everything that has to do with um, phones, phones yeah. tabs, gadgets. Selling stuff. Selling stuff. Selling, yeah. Right. But where is the center for developers? Where? You, you're always going to have places to buy the stuff. I mean, look, for God's sake, buying this hardware is the easy bit. Selling hardware is not difficult. Mm -hmm. That is not the Joel here. If you look at Israel, they call Israel the startup nation because Israel has created an entire industry for a thousand and one reasons related to security, to defense, to the Israeli defense forces, to the fact that they have everybody goes through the military. There's a thousand and one reasons why. We don't need to go into that. But Israel has, has become a world leader. A country of six million, seven million people has become a world leader in technology to the point where billions of dollars are being invested in Israel for the startup nation. That's what, you, you, you've got one thing that they haven't, you've got 170 million people. You've got a vast country. But it's gonna take time. Don't focus on the hardware. The hardware's the easy bit. The hardware's, the, this, is the, this is the nice shiny bit. It's the education for the code developers. And what you have, of course, in this country, which is brilliant, is the entrepreneurs. You've got entrepreneurs by the ton. Every one of you I know around this table has 15 ideas that you want to try and make a business about, correct? <laughs> but you will succeed in spite of government, not because of it. You will succeed in, in spite of all the restrictions on... In, how many of you have got a generator at home? I've got news for you. In the developed world, most of us don't have generators. In the where I live, I've got an apartment but in New York, I don't have a generator. The lights stay on 24 hours a day. If the lights go off in part of New York or a particular district, that's a news story. Why did it happen? So to your point, and this is really serious that you understand, you can become as obsessed as you like by these and computers and blogging and what's fashionable. But until you start asking questions, why do the lights go off? Why do we need generators where my mother has to spend if you're hard earned money to buy diesel so I can watch television in the evening? Hang on, you know, I don't think that happens. It's happening more in South Africa, but it doesn't happen in France or Sweden or Australia or South Korea. 
Those, 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 are the, those are the hard questions. They are the really tough questions, and they're not sexy. They're not, you know, what ties does Richard Quest wear? Is Richard Quest gay? What car do I drive? Where do I go on holiday? Those aren't, the, the, those, the hard questions that will determine the, que the, the hard questions that will determine the future of this country are the ones that you asked. You know, what will it take so we have electricity 24 hours a day? What will it take so that there's a decent road to the airport so that goods and services can actually travel in and out? Not sexy. Oh, I know you're all sitting here thinking, you know, ooh, this all sounds a bit serious. But you asked me the question, when will Nigeria become a top country, economic country? And you asked me... I mean, what will happen with the number of startups coming out from Nigeria? Yeah, the number of startups will be here because there's 176 million, but will they thrive? They're going to need to thrive because they've got electricity. And they're going to thrive when they don't have to spend X hundred dollars or whatever it is, thousands of um, naira a month on diesel. That's the reality. Um, I think that, you know, this sounds good in theory because everybody wants to get to that or the point where we don't have to stop complaining about the basic things, but nobody is releasing the power to even the younger people. Oh yeah, you do. Oh, you do. Oh yes, you do. You have a lot of power. Oh yes, you do. Do not fall for that old bromide. What difference can I make? I'm just one person. That's a lot of crap. You don't do it individually. You do it collectively. It becomes a you know eventually through the power. Look, the significance of your power. When I started at your age, to get a message out. I needed me, I needed a camera, I needed an entire television station or a newspaper to print thousands upon tens of thousands of newspapers, I needed a transmitter, I needed people watching television. Now, all I need, all you need is, and something goes viral. The power of that is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So this, to, to your point, the ability for you to affect change, and it won't happen overnight, this is something else. I mean, your generation wanted it yesterday, correct? Yes. I want it and I want it yesterday, never mind now. And if you haven't got it now, you know, something's wrong. And you've all got the attention span of a goldfish, in terms of, in many ways. We all have now, we all have, I have as well. But. The, the ability for collectively you all to say at the next election, hang on, which politician actually is going to promise better electricity? Which politician is actually going to reform women's rights or gay rights or whatever it might be? Which politician is actually going to do what they say? And it won't happen with, just with Pulse, and it won't happen just with your site, and it won't happen just with your programme. But once you all start saying it, how many people read polls? Um, we get about four million. How many? About four million a month. Right. Yourselves? Anybody else? Give me some other numbers. Mm -hmm. Two point five million. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So we get around four to five million. It's month. huge. Mm -hmm. It's huge. Have you any idea how powerful that is? You have got a main line into the younger generation of this country. You have more power and responsibility than you realise. How you use it is up to you. And I'm not saying you do a diet of how do we keep the lights on, but have you done a feature 24 hours of, of darkness? Have you done a feature, have any of you written about how many times the light went off last night? Or in 24 hours, just find a home, find any home. Get your, get your readers, get your, um, you don't have readers, do you? What do you call them? Sorry? Get your, read, get your no, get the people who read it to send in their log. Ask all readers, because you're across the country,
to send in their log of how many times the lights went off in the last 24 hours. I mean, Richard, there are doctors performing surgery with under candlelight. Right. So, you know, Mrs. Mbawa has written to me, has, has submitted this lot of light. She got light for two hours between two and four in the afternoon. Dr. Smith has written in and said he got light for, his lights went off 15 times. In, I, I'm, this is just an example. Yeah. Start naming and shaming. I will say that we've been doing this, like you said earlier, that um, we are the future of the country. We ask these questions. We have conversations on social media, things that trend, things that go viral. Another issue is not just about us putting it out there, but then taking that conversation offline and actually having an effective response to that. Also, concerning power, I've written about power a couple of times. I've had interviews with like people, stakeholders in the industry. Then it comes down to the case of corruption again. Ah! They tell you that, oh, ah! a certain amount 